Okay, let's try this again. Hopefully things will work. It does still seem kind of delayed though, so I'm not really sure what the issue is. I, I think the issue might be on YouTube's end, uh, maybe not on mine. I'm not really sure. Um, I can tinker with the settings, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it is my machine. Maybe it's downloading updates or something. We'll, we'll figure this out. Meanwhile, how is your guys' week going? <laughs> it's funny because uh, things have actually been going pretty good uh, so far this week. It's been a pretty nice week. Let's see. All right, it does kind of seem like it's a little bit better. So hopefully you guys can bear with me. Um, again, you know, low budget. Uh, show here we're just doing some art there might be some uh, like delayed in the encoding uh, I don't really know but I'm gonna go ahead and just start drawing and hopefully you know the computer stops acting funny and just catches up or something we'll see how it goes so uh, I see that there's a couple people in here uh, trusted livings in here just Dave's in here that's kind of cool um, feel free to chat with me I'm just gonna go ahead and um, you know start drawing and uh hope for the best <laughs> so anyway like i was saying uh previously um it feels like a drawing a dog kind of night so um one of my favorite dogs uh growing up uh was lassie who was a, a collie dog um i'm gonna try to draw a collie dog i i don't as you can see on the paper i don't have anything sketched out yet um so i'm hoping yeah it looks like it looks like things are kind of real time but you know, we'll, we'll see if things catch up. It may be my internet, you know, I do live in Kentucky and it's crappy internet. Well, it is what it is. Working on a declaration of independence lesson plan. That's kind of cool. All right, so I'm just gonna jump right in and start sketching out Lassie. I'm gonna call it Lassie, even though it's just a generic uh, collie dog. I do have my bourbon with me. It is Friday night. We're gonna have some fun. Hopefully people who were watching the other stream that I had to kill uh, will find their way to this one. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll be going for a while, so hopefully they can catch up. So I'm just going to kind of start sketching the dog out. Again, I don't have any kind of, like, placement in mind here. Um, so I think, I think I want the doggo's face to be about this big. A little bit up from the center, I think, would be where his... I'm going to call it a her, actually. Lassie's a girl dog. So right up around here is where her eye would be. Uh, not not her eye. Sorry, her nose. <laughs> I've been drinking. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to call this, like, the center of her head. Usually, I like... When drawing dogs, I like to... um Um... Yeah, I, I always thought they were all like Lassies as well. I didn't know that they were a... Um... Oh, you heard back from the guy who... Um, that's the guy who made that movie, right? What did you hear, uh, Mama Q? I hope that means that the guy's going to release it so that we can watch that. That would be awesome. So I'm going to start with the nose as like an anchor point here. But yeah, I always thought these were just, you know, like all, all of these dogs were named Lassie. Like apparently there were several Lassies, like there wasn't just one dog, like the dog, the show went on for so long that they had to, um, they had to bring in other Lassie lookalikes to keep it going. Let's see, so around his nose. Yeah, so I think I think we have a shot because like you guys saw that that kind of clip from that movie earlier and it's I don't think that they have a lot of options for like a wide release. So if we can get a copy of that, that would be cool. 
So what we're talking about is a movie that we saw that we really just want to like um we saw kind of a preview for it and it just looks hilariously awesome. And it's an independent film that was never released. We're kind of hoping that we can talk the people who made the movie into releasing it anyway. Makeup on the dogs to make them look like uh, Lassie? I believe it. They did that in uh, Meet the Parents. Like, they <laughs> spray painted the cat to make it look like uh, Jinxie. If you guys remember, they found a uh, pretty close look alike at the uh, shelter. Let's see. But for better or worse, I think the head's going to be yay big and then i was going to draw more of the body but i'm just going to draw whatever fits and whatever i have time for this one isn't anybody's dog that i'm trying to uh get exactly i'm just practicing on this dog so it doesn't have to be perfect i debated tonight like um what to draw and uh i was going to draw Groot, but then i thought and eh, i should probably stick with dogs for a little bit uh Groot from guardians of the galaxy since that opened this weekend yeah. Got to make sure all your lassies look alike. Although I don't think anybody would notice if there were like slight differences. But back then they had like lunch boxes and all that stuff. I, I guess all that would have to change. But yeah, like if anybody's seen Guardian, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy yet, don't don't spoil it for me. I probably won't get to see it until either Sunday or Monday. Um, which is a real shame because I, I really want to see it. But uh, I drew uh, Rocket Raccoon earlier today. Hey, Huli, how's it going? <laughs> Mr. Sus, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Everyone's always so suspicious all the time. I'm really hoping to see that movie. So that, that movie is, um, I don't know. It's just low budget. Uh, I don't want to say too, too much bad in, in case like, um, I, I don't think the people who made the movie watch my show, but I, I don't want it. I don't want them to, uh, like I already feel bad for them because I really don't think that movie's going anywhere. So I don't want to talk too bad about it. I'm not talking about Guardians of the Galaxy when I'm talking about that movie. It's this other movie that we noticed earlier today. Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be awesome. Thumbs up, Buttercups is awesome. Jeremy is awesome. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so we're drawing um, Lassie tonight, Huli, uh, in case you're just showing up. I mean, not necessarily Lassie, but like just a collie dog. If I can get all the proportions right and it, and it ends up looking right, because I'm freehanding it. So whenever I'm freehanding a drawing, it's kind of 50-50 that it's going to turn out right. But we'll see. Yeah, so uh yeah, so Guardians of the Galaxy came out this weekend. So I, I drew um Rocket the Raccoon earlier and um I posted it up on Reddit to um the Marvel Studios subreddit and uh it's doing pretty good there. Like people seem to like it. It's um it was like other than the pinned posts, um it was like number nine in the yeah uh, on the uh Marvel Studios subreddit. I thought that was pretty cool. That just means there's a bunch of other nerds like me that like Rocket Raccoon, that's all. That doesn't mean it's any good. Just people like Rocket Raccoon. It's one of my favorite uh, characters from uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know why it's always Fridays that I have these technical glitches on the show. I don't know. Um, like, I didn't really check. I should probably prepare a little bit better and check um, beforehand whether or not... Oh, I know what it is. Freaking... My antivirus is running right now. Because it just popped up. Yeah, well, jerks. Anyway, once that's done screwing up my computer, I bet you that's scheduled on Fridays. I bet you that's the reason why I have problems on Fridays. I wonder if I can turn that off for now. Probably don't want us for it. We'll come back to that later. Hopefully it's done screwing things up. I just want to draw my doggo. What's wrong with that? So let me check. Um, not sure about this line here. I don't know what I was thinking there. I'm a little bit distracted by my computer. There you go. Get rid of that. Oh, yeah, that movie looks terrible. <laughs> but I don't want to say that because, like, I feel bad for the people who made it. So, like, I want to tell them that it's good because it is good. It, it, it is a really good, terrible movie. And sometimes those movies are the best. All right. So, this is all like an orangish color tone. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some mid-tone there. Yeah, like there's a lot of terrible movies that are so awesome because they're terrible. Um, you know, I don't... I don't think anybody would say that Evil Dead has the best acting in the world or, you know, the original Evil Dead. It's supposed to be campy and over the top. So that's, that's what I would classify this movie as. And what's great about that is... Um, you know, that's how I would expect a movie in that the, about that treasure hunt to be, you know? I would expect it to be kind of, like, ridiculous. <laughs> like, if it, if it wasn't ridiculous, that wouldn't make any sense, you know? Move this. So like in the reference photo, it's off to the side, but I don't think that's right. Put it like that. I think that's better. And then that tone kind of continues up. And then my camera keeps glitching. Like, did you guys see that where it kind of blinked out for a minute? Ah, so frustrating. It's distracting, too. What can you do, though? This is what happens when you do it live. So, at this point, I'm just kind of, like, um, getting some some tones in to kind of, like, orient myself since I'm draw I am drawing it freehand. Um, there's some... Uh, and plus, you know, since this isn't anybody's actual dog, I'm trying um, to do things a little bit differently where I'm not drawing every individual hair, things like that. I, I want to try just getting, you know, different tonal values in there and then adding some detail where appropriate and be more like suggestive de of detail on this one. See how it goes. Hey, okay, Larry, how's it going?
We're drawing a doggo tonight. It was either this or Baby Groot to go with my Rocket Raccoon picture I did earlier. Um, or I just got some gouache, which I'm I'm really itching to get into. But I, since I've never used gouache before, I don't want to just kind of like jump right in without, I don't know, testing it first. So at some point, I'm going to do some gouache um, pictures. So if, if, you're, if you're not familiar with gouache, gouache is basically um, watercolor, except that watercolor is transparent and um, gouache is uh, opaque. So it, it's used just like watercolor. Um, you know, you mix it with water and you can make it really, um, really thin or you can leave it thick. Um, in which case it's probably a little bit like acrylic, but since I don't use acrylic either, I'm just getting into painting. I really don't know the difference. Um, but I was debating on what I wanted to, uh, practice with and I'm not ready to jump into oils yet. I don't, because there's like a lot involved in that. You've got to mix oils with different things and I just wanted something easy, you know, mix it with water and see if it works. So it was either continue with watercolor which i'm happy to do i enjoy watercolor it's it's a lot of fun and i do need to practice more with watercolor um or get into um acrylics which you know i could probably also do but then there's a there's kind of like this thing in the middle called gouache and i decided to go with that just because i've seen other people work with gouache and i, I like I like what I see. So like, I like doing watercolors. I like um, how that turns out and how, you know, the texture is and all of that stuff and how easy it is to work with too. Um, so I like all of that. But what I don't like is that you have to start with the lights and then add the darks and stuff. That's like the exact opposite of how I do um, things most times. Or it's at least the opposite of how I see other people paint and how I want to paint. I want to I want to have like, you know, like a back a black background or something like that, and then build up color on top of it. So for me, it it, it made sense to um, go ahead and, and buy a set of gouache. I just like saying the word gouache. I'm gonna say it again, gouache. Um, so anyway, it made sense to me to buy a uh, set of gouache to use along with my watercolor uh, experiments. And also they can kind of be used together. So like if you get, if you like painting in watercolor, you can paint in watercolor. And then when you get to a part that you need to be opaque, like say you're doing a dog or a cat or something like that, and the, the whiskers are white, and you've already painted everything else and you just want to add like white whiskers. So a lot of people just go in with a white gel pen, which is fine. But, um, you know, if you actually want to paint it, you could use gouache over the watercolor. So I'm going to try that. Cause I've done a, I've done a couple of pet pictures. I'm, I've done a couple of pet pictures in color and I always struggle when I get to the um, the white whiskers. Like, how, how do you make white whiskers like in a black and white picture? It's tough. So like in color, it's also tough because like, I don't know, you either have to erase a line to represent the whiskers or you gotta come up with something. So anyway, long story short, I need something opaque. I just need some white opaqueness. I just ramble on and on. Wash. Drink, coolie. <laughs> Never tell me there's a drinking word because I'll just say it over and over again. How's everybody's week going? You guys looking forward to the weekend? Oh, it's also Derby weekend. Uh, I won't be around for Derby. I, I have to go out of town. I'm going to be down in uh, North Carolina. Um, but I know a lot of people heading out to the Derby. It's going to be awesome. That's two minutes of sports. 
So any of you guys uh, betting the ponies or are you guys going to watch? Oh, you know what? Man, everything's going on this weekend. So you've got um, having water for now. I'll drink to that. <laughs> hey, because I can. Yeah, so you got Derby going on this weekend. You've got Guardians of the Galaxy that's out this weekend. You've got Prince Charles turning into King Charles this weekend. I think that's on Sunday, like the coronation. Um, I don't know what's involved in that, but I was watching um, The Crown, which is a Netflix series on uh, Queen Elizabeth. Mostly Queen Elizabeth. It's on the royal family in general. But um, back then it was a big to-do. Like when she was, um, I want to say inaugurated, when she was uh, coronated, it was like this second time they'd ever done like a world broadcast like coast like around the world type broadcast that's how new television was back then so i don't know if uh old charles there is gonna have as much to do with his but why is he king now yeah queen elizabeth passed away you didn't hear that there's a um Oh, when was that? Was that this year or was that the end of last year? Yeah, Queen Elizabeth passed away. Um, like in the last couple of years, we lost Queen Elizabeth. We lost Betty White. That sucks. Yeah. Everybody from that generation. Not too many of them around anymore. But yeah, he's he's going to be, um, like, I don't know how that works. Like, are you not allowed to wear the crown until then or something? Like, is it basically king apparent, monarch apparent? I don't know. It was when Candy was in Scotland. So that would have been last year, wouldn't it? I think. I don't want there to be fur up in here. Let me blur out this side. I'm dropping things all over the place. I'm having technical issues. I'm dropping things all over the place. Our birds' heads are falling off. You guys ever watch that, Dumb and Dumber? I'm sure you have. It's a classic. Uh, yes, uh, because I can. I did get that uh, those. Um, I saw those earlier today. So I might I might get around to drawing something with those uh, next week, maybe. Maybe I I I haven't committed to anything yet. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of want to get into like playing with those gouache at some point, but we'll see how that goes. So I'm happy with that eye. I think this eye is on the same level and sitting in a good spot. It's kind of funny. Like I notice how I draw differently different times. So like oftentimes I'll draw in the entire head shape before I move on to putting in details here, I'm just kind of like, eh, found an anchor point. I'm going to build off of that. I think it's when like I'm working on like heavy detail pictures, um, where I'm drawing them from uh, scratch. I, um, uh, I kind of build away from an anchor anchor point. Um, that's kind of risky though. Like I don't actually recommend what I'm doing now, uh, because I kind of know that there's enough space for everything I want to put in here, but, um, you do kind of run a risk of uh, running it like running into an issue on the composition where you didn't give yourself enough space for something and it could look weird. So I don't recommend that. Everybody knows just Dave. 
He's our resident uh, guy from the UK here. So starting Sunday, he's got a new monarch. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, like, um, I'll, I'll definitely let you know one way or the other. I only glanced at them. I haven't really looked. looked. I, I, I noticed that I got the email and I noticed that there were pictures attached. I kind of briefly looked at the pictures, but I didn't really uh, get too far into the weeds on those. So let me do some blending over here on this side. I do like to work between um, adding detail and then blending it out, adding detail and then blending it out. So like, especially like when I'm working with like, um, like a detailed picture, like these pet portraits that I've been doing, I don't think I've done any kind of like abstract or like expressionist type um, pet portrait yet. Like for the most part, I've been kind of like, I don't know, going for like more realism on them or like more highly detailed or something. I wonder why that is like, um, I've done expressive, uh, people portraits. I've done expressive horse portraits. I wonder why I haven't done an expressive dog portrait yet. Maybe I'll give that a shot sometime. Like I'll, when you're doing like an expressive picture, you're just trying to capture the essence of what you're drawing. Um, what is the essence of a dog? I have to try to explore that. At this point, it could be any kind of dog. I need to, uh, need to get into some other areas here so that I can get the sense that this is a Holly. Leave some room for the ears. So I think that's a good distance. So your eyebrows on the pup kind of start here. Oh, it's tomorrow? Wait, so they're competing with the Derby? That ain't right. That wouldn't have flown under Queen Elizabeth. Or maybe it's just at a different time. I guess worth I saw it being Sunday. Maybe it's Sunday in the US. Is that right? Are you gonna go to that, Jess Dave? Or like how's that work? Do you guys just get in a big old queue or ah, that's a queue? You guys Like, I, I've seen the big long lines um, over there in London for different things. Like, uh, when Queen Elizabeth passed away, there was, like, a big long line to pay the respects and stuff. How's that work? Do you guys actually go anywhere? Or is it just kind of, like, almost like a um, like a, a march of some sort to uh, just kind of pay respects? So here in here in the United States, um, you know, some people care like about being patriotic and other people don't. But, you know, like there's still kind of, um, I don't know, like at least a uh, thought of what it means to be patriotic. Is, is it kind of like that over in the UK? Like, is it is there a sense of, um, you know, being like a loyal subject if you like a cold party? 
<laughs> um, is there a sense of being like a loyal subject that uh, people are encouraged to adhere to? Like, you know, even either you're patriotic or you're not here in the United States, but, it, um, you know, in certain circles, if you're not patriotic, like if you just say like, ah, who's America sucks, you know, like somebody's going to, somebody's going to be angry. Like somebody's going to be offended by that. Is it the same over there in the UK where if you're not like a loyal subject, uh, people take offense. I don't know what I'm saying. Hopefully you get the idea. Oh no, a cone of shame. I should definitely do draw a dog at some point in a cone of shame. All right, so how am I going to do these ears? So I think that ear kind of comes up and around how far away from this eye. So I think it's about yay far from the eye and then the shape. So this is what I like to do. I just kind of like, you know, based on this eye, this ear should come up and then kind of flange out. Is it? Is that a term? Curve out. All right. That looks like a butterfly. I didn't mean for it to look like a butterfly. I'm just joking. That's what it looks like. Um, over here, I'm going off with this anchor point. So this comes straight up and then the fur kind of fluffs up here. And then kind of same deal. It's a little bit higher than this year. So this is where, like, you know, if I had measured things, it would have been better because, like, I'm buttoned up against the edge of the paper here. I should have should have anticipated that. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I, I feel like it's probably, like, at least a little bit traditional. Like, I was thinking, like, uh, a lot of people, um, just because, like, he is being coronated, the conversation comes up, like, what's the point of uh, having a king um, if, like, you know, you have your parliament and all that stuff anyway? Um, it's not like he does anything. That was kind of the point on um, the, uh, the crown when I watched that. Like, the king doesn't actually do anything. So, like, what's the point? Um, but I think the crown does a good job of kind of, um, you know, mentioning that it's kind of traditional anyway, right? So, like, this is a bad analogy, but here in Kentucky, we're known for our fried chicken. Um, whether or not you eat fried chicken or not, you still respect the fried chicken. There you go. That's how I see the king of England. <laughs> The king of England is fried chicken. That's probably a terrible analogy. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna double down on that. I think it is kind of like that, where you know you it, you have to have traditions, right? So like it's kind of silly some of the traditions we have here in America too. But who would we be like as a national identity without them? You know. I don't, I can't think of any traditions that we have here in the United States that would be comparable, but, you know, we do have some crazy things that we do just because, like, we've always done it. All right, big fluffy ears. I like it. All right, and then these really kind of flange out all the way down past the eyes. Now we're kind of here. And then on this side, kind of same deal. I'm wondering if I'm making this too narrow, but I can, I can work on that when I get in. I might just 
depending on how much time, I might just do the face area and kind of just suggest that the body's here. Oh, you, your dog's name is Zeus. I'm like... Give me a moment to uh, realize what you were talking about. Because we were talking about kings and all of that stuff. I was like, we're going, we're going a little far back to ancient Greece here. But no, that's your, that's your doggo. That's a great name for a dog. I think the reason why I uh, I've been drawing so many dogs lately is when I want to get good at it because I think like pet portraits are fun, but also I just don't get tired of looking at dogs. Like I can look at dogs all the time and not get bored. Um, I don't think I could be a vet just because I don't want to see a dog suffer. You know, like you would you would definitely be. You know, dealing with the good and the bad as a vet, but, you know, maybe a, a dog caretaker or something like that, I could do that, because, like, I never get tired of looking at dogs, or cats, you know, I like cats, too, but I'm definitely a dog person more than cat person. I am surprised that uh, it seems to be that uh, YouTube, or at least YouTube's algorithm, is pro dog over cat. Because I've done a couple of cat pictures, and you know, they look just as good as any dog picture I've done, and yet they don't get any love. So I think that uh, I think that YouTube's biased towards dogs. Have I drawn my dog bear? Um, kinda. I'm not totally happy with it. So, I had, um, I had this picture that I did where she's wearing a hoodie. Um, so I drew bear there. Um, but the eyes are too big. Uh, so I'm not totally happy with it. But that's bear wearing a hoodie. Uh, unfortunately, that's the only one I've drawn. I really should draw a picture of her. Because she is a super cute dog. Um, I did do Guinness once. And then I drew an old man drinking a Guinness. <laughs> for St. Patrick's Day. That was fun. I get a lot of compliments on that. The old man in a pub drinking Guinness. Like, some people have said that's their favorite drawing that I've done. Which is odd, because, like, I don't know. Yeah. Everyone's got a favorite. I can't tell what my favorite is out of all the ones I draw. Usually the ones I like, um, like if there's something I like, I know it, as soon as I post it up, it's it's not going to... The, the ones that I like are the ones that nobody else likes. Which is odd, you know. But I guess, I guess it's because I like them for different reasons. Um, I like them because, like, some technical thing worked out or, or something like that, you know. Like, some technique I was trying worked. Yeah, bear is cute. Looks like a bear is a Disney movie. That, uh, yeah, because the eyes are so big. Yeah, uh, that's a good... Yeah, see, I could just say that I, I intentionally made her eyes too big uh, to make her a Disney uh, princess. I like it. That's a good cover there, uh, Q. Appreciate it. See, now I like that picture. I didn't like it before. So when drawing dog pictures, it's really just kind of, it's almost like drawing human hair. You, you just kind of have to follow 
the grain of the hair, like which, which direction is flowing. And then you just make your like little marks and stuff. I am trying to just put in like rather large areas by blending things out just to see how that goes. I think that kind of works. Because I noticed that some of these uh, pictures that I do end up, you know, taking like three hours to do. And I don't, I don't think it needs to take that long. So I'm wondering if there's any way to make them go a little bit faster and not sacrifice the quality of detail. Oh, purple iris is... That's cool. It's springtime. So any of you guys have any special plans for the weekend? Or just hanging out? There you go. Like, um, there's a crazy U.S. tradition for no reason. So, like, we have a Memorial Day. And for some reason, we have picnics on Memorial Day. That doesn't really make any sense to me. But it's a national tradition, you know, not going to change it. There's probably some other, there's probably better examples. That's a terrible example of German. You guys are allowed to say that I have terrible examples. I won't take offense. Terrible comparisons, I guess. Not examples. I'm so looking forward to seeing that movie. That movie was hilariously bad. <laughs> People are going to think we're talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, but no, this is a movie that hasn't seen the light of day that really should. Oh, cool. Is that like a new hot tub you're getting? Hot tub would be nice, to be honest. Me, I have to uh, go out of town. Um, I'm heading down to North Carolina for a wedding and kind of to run some errands. Um, but that's like, it's just like a one day trip. It's not very far from me. It's only like six hours. So I'm probably going down there on a Saturday and coming straight back on Sunday. Just like a little overnighter. But that's fun. It's like a road trip. This still looks like it could be any number of type of dogs. I think you I think what makes a collie a collie. Let me bring this line down. And then this kind of comes out. Really this bit here. This kind of like a lion's mane. Let me see if I can get that suggested real quick. Kind of comes out the corner here. Yeah, collies have kind of like this like lion's mane going on. And lassie dogs have like a dark area on this side of it. I think that's right. And then it's like it's like the lion of the dog kingdom. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah I guess it it should be okay. I'm going. It's a cousin's daughter's wedding. Never met them. I think it'll be fun. It's nice to meet with family that you haven't seen in a long time and, you know, they've had kids and you get to meet the kids and stuff like that for the first time. 
Last weekend, was it last weekend? Wow. Man, that feels like it was just like the other day. I guess that was a week ago. Last weekend, I went to a niece's daughter, so I guess grandniece's dance recital. That was weird. Um, I don't even know how old she is, but a bunch of kids up on stage all looking at like the um, dance coordinator for like direction because... I mean, they're kids. They, they're not going to be able to memorize dance moves. But that was odd to go to. But I support my nieces. They're good people. Oh, and I've got another picture to post up. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow if I have time. Um, I did I did a um, kind of like watercolor landscape portrait deal for a friend of mine for her birthday. And I think it turned out okay. They like it, uh, her and her uh, husband. So I might be posting that up soon too. I didn't want to post that because her birthday was today. So I didn't want to like let the cat out of the bag because uh, her husband had asked me to draw that um, for her birthday gift. So I didn't want to share it in case she was watching. So I'll have to post that at some point soon. Uh, oh, uh, what am I drawing with? Uh, so this is a charcoal pencil. This is a medium charcoal pencil because I'm not really sure about any of these lines. Um, I also have a uh, softer charcoal pencil that creates like darker areas. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm drawing with charcoal. Um, I've got some pencil like graphite pencils, but I haven't used them in so long. I really should break them out again just to uh, play with because like a lot of these finer details might actually look good and like with the mechanical pencil, like you can get like a lot more uh, control over it. Uh, the the thing that I don't like about um, graphite, uh, which is one of the reasons I stopped using them, is they're so shiny. You know, like you do a picture and then like you turn you you have it on a side or something, it kind of like shines too much, which isn't a deal breaker. It's just you know like. I don't know. Like, I don't like it as much. I like, I like these charcoals, um, a little bit more just for me, you know, it really doesn't matter. Like if, if you draw in graphite, that's cool. I'm not going to beat you up. Nobody else is going to beat you up. Plenty of people draw, draw in graphite. I just prefer charcoal myself. Plus I, I keep telling myself, I mentioned this before, but I keep telling myself that like, Whenever I use charcoal, I feel like I'm a caveman who just reached into a fire pit and pulled out a stick and started drawing. Which is totally weird, I know, but that, that's the way I look at it. So it's a weird, um, yeah, graphite erases, uh, well, as long as they're like light lines, um, you know, these still erase pretty well. Uh, you can just kind of lift it off. Um, but yeah, they, you're right. Uh, this doesn't erase as easily. But also, I'm trying not to be in the habit of erasing. Um, I, you know, like when I draw something um, and I draw a line, I'm kind of committed to it. And if I want to kind of, if I want to kind of fix it or something, I, I, I try to work it into the page in a different way or try to draw over it or something like that. I'm not in the habit of erasing lines so much anymore. Because I also like dealing with like ink and pens and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I still make a lot of mistakes. Don't get me wrong. It's just there's other ways of dealing with mistakes. So like you can, you can kind of like like say this nose was in the wrong place. I can either erase it or I can just kind of build it up a little bit and kind of like slowly move it and like cast this bit down here in the shadow or something to kind of move it a millimeter or something like that. Um, you know, obviously the the best way to deal with mistakes is try to limit the ones that you make. So you want to try to avoid them, but there's ways of dealing with mistakes uh, that you make. 
even if uh, even if you do make them you just kind of like work around them sort of um but yeah I'm, I'm definitely not in the habit of erasing that much just because again i i do i do work with pen and i do work with paint sometimes but more to the point i want to be in the habit of where you know i am working with those tools so i'm i don't know hopefully you get my my point i i just i just uh for me uh erasing is not uh, like a habit i want to have i want to um you know deal with mistakes in other ways don't get me wrong i'm still going to make mistakes everybody does and i make quite a few of them i make more than most um But like in paint, you can just paint over it. In pen, you can just kind of like make more lines around it and stuff. And then, you know, the mistake line or whatever. And then also sometimes like say you say you sketch like a circle or something to represent the dog's face. And then you kind of like, you know, penciled it in. And, you know, most people, they, they go back and they erase that initial shape that they made. But like why? You know, it's part of the art process. Just leave it in there. Just, um, you know, make that part of your, your, your work. Make the mistake part of your work. You made it. It's your creation. You know, your mistake is part of the art. And then also like this, this is actually a philosophy I have when it comes to art. Um, and it's probably because I, I keep my expenses kind of low when it comes to, uh, the material, but I, I look at it as like, you know, if you don't like something just toss it you know you shouldn't be um, overly committed to the things that you do um there's like an investment in material so there's the paper the you know in this case pe uh, charcoal pencils and stuff like that but that's kind of negligible it doesn't really cost a lot for an individual piece of paper or you know the amount of charcoal that goes into this picture the the real cost is the amount of time that you put into it Right. So like, say I, I sunk two hours into this tonight. Um, do I feel like that's a waste if it doesn't turn out right? I can see some people thinking that way, but I don't. And I, I don't really think that that's a good way to look at it. If you're, if you're drawing art because, um, you enjoy drawing art, then it, it really doesn't matter what the product is, right? It doesn't matter what comes out of it. It's the experience of drawing that you enjoyed. Right. So I'm enjoying like I don't even care if I finish this picture. I'm just enjoying sitting here drawing, practicing, drawing while talking to you guys. I, I'd like to make more progress on it than I have. But um, if this picture never gets finished, I don't care. You know, like this is this, nobody asked me to draw this dog. Nobody's paying me to draw this dog. It's just for fun. So this is what I do for fun on a Friday night is I drink bourbon and hang out with you guys and stuff like that. So. Anyway, my point is, I, I've gotten off on a tangent. My, my point is that I really think that that's a good philosophy to have as somebody who's getting into art or hopefully people who have been doing art for a long time. The philosophy, the advice, whatever you want to call it that I would give is don't be too attached to the work you do. Um, you should be ready to just kind of throw it away. And like, I'm totally prepared to throw this picture away. It's just paper. And my overall point in that is then it doesn't really matter if you make a mistake, right? Because who cares? It's just, you know, something that you were fully prepared to throw away anyway. So just keep pressing on. You make a mistake, keep going. Either try to cover it up, try to fix it, try to move it, erase it if you can. You know, it's hard to erase ink, but be prepared to fix a mistake by starting over. Hey, Lorraine. Happy Friday. Anyway, that's my philosophy. I, I think it's good advice um, as well. Like, I, I think people would be better off if they took that advice. But also, you know, I can see the frustration people have. Like, they're trying to make something look good and it's just not working out they want to erase it they get frustrated with it 
Those are all perfectly normal reactions. And those are reactions I sometimes have too. It's just I want to I want to get beyond those, you know. Those are reactions that I don't want to have. Perfectly normal to have them, but I don't want them. Somebody else can have those. I want to be able to just like toss it in the garbage. Uh, you can ask just Dave, how many times did I work on your doggo's picture? <laughs> That's how I deal with mistakes. I just start over and do it and redo it. I like dog noses. I like drawing dog noses. They're a little bit tough, though, because there's like three layers of different tones here. So like this top part is kind of cast a shadow. You've got some highlight through here. Like it's a three-dimensional object. No, these noses are kind of strange. And then at the bottom, they're like really dark. And then there's a line that kind of comes right up through here. I don't even know what it's called. I guess like on a human... I don't know what that would be called. I like pastels. Uh, I feel very good about pastels. Um, you know, with the exception of watercolor that I'm trying to get into, most of my color stuff is in pastels. I do have colored pencils. I've worked with those, but I really like how you can blend um, pastels. So between colored pencils and pastel pencils, for example, I prefer pastel pencils. Um, but I also I also like the pastel sticks as well. Um, I've told the story, um, I think in here, uh, I told the story at some point to somebody. Um, when I was a wee little Jeremy, uh, just getting started drawing and stuff, uh, there was a guy I met who was um, a uh, charcoal and pastel artist, and uh, he was like a street artist, and I got my portrait done by him. And I thought it was just the uh, most awesomest thing in the world. And I heard that he was doing um, art classes. So I begged my parents to let me go to them. And um, that's what they were. They were like pastel art classes and stuff. So like as a really small Jeremy, um, I was drawing cats and stuff like that and pastel. So I grew up really liking pastels. Um, I've got a couple of pictures back there on the wall they're really hard to see but there's kind of a blue green one up there that's kind of a picture let's see move my finger over somewhere up there um that's a that's a pastel uh landscape of a uh, like a horse farm and then there's a couple of portraits back there that are also done in pastels so anyway long story short yeah i love pastels Uh, I, what I particularly like about them is, um, like these charcoals, they're really easy to blend. That's my favorite thing about pastels, and that's my favorite thing about charcoals. They're really easy to blend. Now, I know that you can blend um, pencils, like graphite pencils as well, but I don't know. Like, I can just use my hand to uh, blend this charcoal if I wanted to. Which I have done. Like, I've done some um, speed sketches with uh, charcoal. They are a lot more expressive. Hell, I, I was painting with charcoal last um, last Friday, I think. It's just a versatile medium, you know? Like, I, I was using it as watercolor, essentially. It was so fun. Just as an experiment. But yeah, I love pastels. Pastels are great. Um... I've got a small set of pastels. I've got um, I've got some Rembrandt pastels over here in this. Uh, like I, I have a briefcase where I throw all my like, supplies in, and um, I've got some Rembrandt pastel sticks in there. I've got some um, I forget the name brand, but I've got some pastel pencils. Now, I'm not saying that I do really great art with pastels. It's hit or miss. Sometimes it comes out good. Sometimes it doesn't. I, I have trouble figuring out what colors to use and, like, figuring out how to blend the colors and stuff like that. So I still have a lot of work to do on getting better with them. 
but yeah, I, I really do enjoy them. All right, so I think that I've got the dog's basic shape of its face here. Like most of this is white down here. So I think I'm going to start filling in some of this, these things up here just so that even if I don't finish the picture, I still have a decent thumbnail that I can add on the video when I'm done. Like, it's not necessary, but I do want, you know, to, like, make progress a little bit. And I feel like I can. I feel like a lot of this stuff, it's just tonal value. So I'm going to use my blending stub here with, I'm going to grab some, I'm going to grab some charcoal right off the stick. And then use my blending stub to uh, kind of draw with for a bit. Yeah, see, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, making making the art with like random things. I mean, like I said, one of the things that attract me. Is, tracks me to uh, charcoal over graphite is a I you know you can make your own charcoal like in a fire pit or something if you really wanted to you just need hard wood and a fire and you can make your own charcoal sticks it doesn't get any more um you know grounded in earthy than that you know I've yet to meet a person who can make their own graphite. I don't even know what goes into graphite. Like, how do you make graphite? Oh, uh, just Dave might know. He went to the uh, the Derwent plant where they literally make the pencils. That's kind of cool. I don't even know what graphite is. I mean, charcoal, I understand. It's just burnt wood or compressed burnt wood. Oh, um, because again, I, I don't have a P.O. box set up yet. That's something that's on my list. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I realize people do want to like send send um, send things in like you know like an actual picture to draw or something like that. Um, I I haven't taken that step yet. It's it's something on my to do list. I'll try to get that done this week. So um, remind me, um, you know, over the next couple of days. Because like I didn't know that whether or not this channel would take off. Like I only started in January. And um, I didn't know if I would stick with it or whatever. I didn't know I would need it. it. Like, nobody ever sends me anything, right? So, like, I've never needed a P.O. box. Like, all I get is junk mail. Like, even my bills are all, like, electronic and stuff. I don't even <laughs> like, I don't even get bills. Any well, I get bills sometimes, but they, they go right in the trash because they're, they're already paid online. Graphite is a mineral. So pastels are actually really earth earthy as well. So uh, pastels are like a pigment that um, are kind of like, uh, you know, wrapped with a binder and kind of compressed into um, uh, sticks. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what kind of, like where the pigments come from or whatever, but I imagine they're like, I don't know, almost like clay. But yeah, I like all that kind of stuff. That that's that's appealing to me. And then also I just like, you know, the idea of just making art out of nothing as well. So like, you know. Um this uh this old needable eraser here, you you can't imagine how many times I I use this as like a, a stress ball. Like I might be having like an online meeting with somebody, like uh, a Zoom call or something like that. And um 
out of the frame I'm, I'm sitting here kneading this uh this little eraser and, and making it into like little sculptures and stuff like i don't know making like little people out of it or whatever that kind of stuff's fun that's art you know it's, it's just the act of uh create, creating something out of a medium you know and in this case the medium is the uh the needed eraser I still feel like this dog could be any number of kind of dogs. At this point. I do think that I'm going to try doing either watercolor or if Huli's still in here, gouache um, painting of a dog at some point, just to see how different it is from drawing a dog. Oh uh, yeah, uh, the needed erasers are the best. They mine graphite? I didn't even realize that. Looks like the um the whole glitchy issue I was having with my um computer earlier has cleared up. That's kind of cool. I swear it's because my antivirus is running. <laughs> uh, who is still paying attention? Guess I'm gonna have to say gouache again. Um, I've done, I've done a couple of horses in pastel, like, you guys want to go back through my, um, my videos on my channel, I've done two horses in pastel, done a couple of portraits in pastel, there's quite a few items up there, like up there on that wall. And then, of course, um, when I'm dealing with black paper, which I've done a few of those pictures, white charcoal is essentially pastel. So, like, they call it white charcoal, but really it's, ju it's just a, like a hard pastel. I think. It works like pastel. But, yeah, I've got a little white charcoal stick here. I've got them all over the place. Uh, whole box of pastels. I love pastels. Pastels are awesome. I like the mess they make. Some people don't like pastels because of the mess they make. Um, or like, you know, the texture of it in your hand. Like they don't like getting dirty or whatever. I love all that crap. Like, honestly, my hands are way too clean right now to be dealing with charcoal. Like, I feel like I need to get them dirty. Um, a lot of the times when I do, like, a quick pas uh, like uh, pastel or charcoal picture, actually, uh, my hands get, like, really, really gross. There's, like, I mean, I look like a mechanic. Oh, that's awesome. Like temporary art from uh, the water? That's great. I've seen somebody do something like that. I didn't know they were doing it at Disney. That's cool. I'm going to kind of speed up the sketching here on these outer things and just kind of like brush them so that we're not here all night.
Yeah, I I especially like uh, temporary art. Um, just from like a conceptual standpoint. You know things like graffiti like i i don't i don't think anybody should be damaging other people's property and stuff like that but you know i like graffiti i like banksy's um i like um i like you know street art that isn't graffiti like it was actually requested or something like that but <clears throat> you know that at some point it's going to peel off the building or fade away or something like that you know it doesn't last forever um I love things like that. I like that art does sometimes last forever. Like, you know, I like that you can go into a museum and see a Da Vinci uh, in 2023. But also, you know, it'd be way cooler if there was a Da Vinci and we never even heard about it because all this stuff disappeared. That'd be kind of neat too. Not on your palm. Now I'm looking at my palm. Do I have a dot on my palm and didn't know? I think I might watch that uh, coronation of King Charles. Like, I know people aren't really into, like, the whole royal stuff anymore, but I like to, uh, I like to participate in historical events, and that's a historical event. The show The Crown was actually really good. Like, I knew nothing about the royal family before that. Like, um, I probably wouldn't have known enough to be upset when Queen Elizabeth died, but having watched The Crown, I'm like, oh man, Queen Elizabeth died. All right, well, I guess I should move on to the other side now. <laughs> I don't think this picture is ever going to get done. I think most pet, pet portraits, they're just going to take longer than two hours. I think it's just all the, the detail in them, you know? I don't know how to cut corners on the detail. Like, you can simplify detail and stuff like that, but... How do you do that with fur? Like if you were drawing a field of grass, you wouldn't draw each individual blade. And I'm not drawing each individual uh, piece of fur. But also, I kind of am drawing a lot of fur here. <laughs> like that's what makes it look cool. I don't know if I would want it any differently.
Yeah. Um. Did you ever watch the show The Crown? Uh, just Dave. Like um, each season they kind of um go over a different portion of like Queen Elizabeth's life, but they also have uh, you know, people per portraying the prime ministers like Gillian Anderson as Margaret Thatcher. I'm like, whoa! I didn't realize like I didn't realize like she was that old, and I didn't realize I was that old. But uh, yeah, Gillian Anderson as Margaret Thatcher. That was not something I was expecting. And of course, I don't know who most of the um, prime ministers are over there and stuff. So I'm just nodding my head like, okay, this is the prime minister. I get it. Like, obviously, I know who Winston Churchill is, which, you know, that's how far back that show goes. Um, Winston Churchill days. Uh, and I know who Margaret Thatcher is because she was in a James Bond once. Yeah, I love The Crown, Huli. All right, cool. You've seen it. We can talk. Um, I love that, that show. Yeah, I agree. Really good casting. I feel like everybody who is an English actor got on that show at some point, you know. I just recently finished watching, um, the last season of it. And, uh, yeah, like, I thought it was great. I think it ended too soon. Like, I think they could have gone, um, one more season. Like, I don't know why they decided to leave it where it was, but if they had one more season, I think that would be awesome. I don't know what they would talk about, though. Thank you, kid. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm going to finish this one tonight. Um, but this one's <clears throat> this one's just for fun. This isn't for for anybody. I just wanted to draw a collie. But I think I'm only going to get the head done today. Like I can I can kind of sketch in roughly where the body would be. You know, come down here. We've got some fur coming off here, but you know, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna get any detail in or anything like that. That's okay though. Not every picture needs to be finished. I was just saying, I've got to learn how to uh, speed up the process a little bit. You know. Figure out how to suggest a lot more detail without drawing each individual piece. I don't know. Figure it out. But it's a lot of fun drawing dogs. Like I was saying earlier, um, I never get tired of looking at them. It's funny, like some of these dogs take, um, you know, several, several hours. And then I did, did that black lab. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's off screen, but I did a black lab where on black paper, where it's just, you're doing the highlights of them. And that took like 20 minutes <laughs> and it turned out really good too. So it really just depends on the dog. And honestly, like. I could be using toned paper, right? So like this dog has a lot of orange in it. If I was using orange paper, I don't have to draw the orange parts.
I guess there are little things I can do. But really, I'm just hanging out. I'm just hanging out chatting with you guys. It doesn't really matter. Hmm. Yeah, the only reason I know who Margaret Thatcher is is because she was in um, For Your Eyes Only, James Bond movie. <laughs> That's just yeah, how much I know about British politics. Roger Waters. Is that somebody I should know? I have no idea who that is. Seems like a name I've heard. Oh, it's Roger Waters from Pink Floyd. Okay. I know Pink Floyd. I didn't know their names. That's where I, I should have known them from. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Pink Floyd, too. I just didn't know their names. I thought one of them's name was Floyd. That's the type of uh, music one should be listening to while they're drawing, to be honest. Like, just kind of zone out, listen to some Pink Floyd. Just have the one lamp above you so you can see what you're doing, but turn off all the other lights. That sounds like a great Friday night. Let's see what else I can get done fairly quickly. Yeah, I feel like in that band there should be a guy named Pink or Floyd, one or the other. For all I know there is, I, I'm familiar with the band. I, I have no idea who uh, who is in it. 
I'm just bad with names anyway. I really think that these uh, dark markings around the face are, and, and the mane through here and stuff, those are the things that really make a collie a collie. Otherwise, this dog can look like any number of other dogs. But also the, the body shape. So, like, it's hard to tell looking straight on that this is a collie. Um, but certainly on the side, you know, you can tell. You, you know what Lassie looks like. I'm surprised they haven't, like, remade Lassie yet, you know? Like, they seem to be, like, mining old shows and stuff and for new, you know, new properties. Like, I feel like they could get away with doing a Lassie, um, either a live-action Lassie or, like, a Scooby-Doo kind of Lassie where the Lassie is uh, CGI. I think they could uh, introduce Lassie to a whole new generation without it even having to hire a new dog. And there's probably enough um, older people. Like, I'm not even that old, and I know who Lassie is. Uh, maybe, you know, kids these days, they don't know. But I feel like they could introduce the Lassie property to, or, you know, the Lassie brand to, like, new audiences. I think they could pull that off. Definitely some dark area over here. Picking up now. Oh yeah, the shedding is crazy. I think I've only met one in real life, but I love them. Yeah, I can imagine all this long fur. I feel like the same as um can be said of like, you know, huskies and any kind of long-haired dog. I bet you they're super sweet. They just look like sweet dogs. Could you imagine this dog being a guard dog? Somebody would break in and be like, Aww. It's so cute. I'm just going to leave. I think this dog is probably super sweet. <laughs> well, I feel like the bones are in here, but I feel like I still need to add some more dark areas in order to make it believable. Let's see if I can do that. Ah, some good bourbon. <laughs> Alright, so this is all dark through here. Oh, miniature collie. That's even sweeter. Like, or cuter. You guys ever see miniature horses? They have uh, some of those around here. They're about the size of dogs. They're called minis. Um, like there's a whole Instagram of just these miniature horses. And they're about the size of dogs. Some people even keep them as pets where they can come and go inside the house using a dog door. They're adorable. Oh my God, they're so cute. Like horses are cute. Try meeting one of those miniature horses. I mean, they, they kind of have, like, weird features. Like, they have, like, a big pot belly almost, like, I don't know. Like, they kind of have a pig's belly uh, and these little stubby legs and stuff. But, oh, man, they're so cute. 
And they just run around doing adorable little things. I'm just kind of penciling in this dark area quickly, not adding like a ton of detail just so that it's in there. I'm going to justify it by saying it's out here in the periphery where, you know, things might get a little blurred out. But the truth is that I just want to make sure that the dark areas are in there. Because I feel like Lassie had this kind of dark area on the outside of the main. I don't even know if that's what you call this this stuff, but I'm going to call it a main because it looks like a lion's main. So I think this reference picture I have, which is not Lassie, has all this dark area. So I'm going to assume that Lassie did too. Because I think... I think I tried to find a picture that looked kind of like Lassie, but this is just off of some free, um, like, stock image place. I think I got this from Unsplash, but I'm not sure. Could have been Pixabay. I think the world's smallest horse was called Thumbelina, and it was only like a foot tall. I think. I could be wrong on the height. But isn't that ridiculous? That's adorable. So I've talked about this technique before where, like, I come in and... You know, I'll add a bunch of scribble and then I'll blend some of it out. So some of it stays rough and then some of it stays bl blended. Or some of it becomes blended. And I feel like that gives you the sense of both detail and non-detail. Um, which is what you find in like a photograph. Like you'll see at the edges a bit of detail, but then it kind of blends out into other areas. I think I should probably comment on what I'm doing every now and then. Yeah, I think it I think it is the longer haired dogs that have a lot of detail that you gotta capture. The short haired dogs, it's like drawing skin tone, like you can probably get away with that. Having trouble painting cats. I need to give that a shot. So um willy nilly, like do you work um you work in watercolor, acrylic, something like that? Like, I, I don't think I've checked out your channel. I might have. You mentioned pastels earlier. Do you, do you work in pastels? Let's see. I have a cat picture, actually. This is... Ah, there you go. Um, this is a... Uh, a cat picture I did in pastel pencils. Cats are hard, especially when they're long-haired cats like that. I agree. And I'm not even completely happy with that picture. I think that picture took a while and I didn't get the level of detail I wanted to. 
but I feel like I'm getting better at things like that, though. You use all, yeah, okay, so you're like me, you just kind of switch around and stuff. That's a true artist there. Props. Like, I'm, I'm trying to develop a consistent style, but I, I can't even do that. I'm just, like, all over the place. I, I switch between different mediums, like, just trying out different things. Um, I switch between different styles. Um, I think, I think I'm trying to settle on particular styles for particular things I draw, right? So like, for example, these dogs and stuff, um, I wouldn't, or at least I haven't yet done like an expressive dog picture. I try to make it somewhat realistic versus some of these other things that like on the pets, I try to make it look realistic. Um, versus some of the other stuff, like if I'm drawing a human, uh, like, portrait or something, I can get a little looser with that style, I guess, and not feel bad about it. Yeah, it's too light. So, back to gouache. That's what I'm hoping, so I bought a set of gouache, and I'm hoping that I can, you know, get some opaqueness in there, and uh, not have to do something so light. I'm with you. Watercolor. Well, watercolor is light, but I, I feel like, and I, I don't really have the patience to do it, but I've seen other people do it. You can build up some layers in um, watercolor and get some really dark areas from doing that. I usually don't have the patience to wait and add all those different layers that you would need, but I think it's possible at least. Now, if you ask me if I've ever done it no like if i add black and it comes out gray i'm happy with that like i did a horse the other day where i put down a, like a lot of black and um and it ended up drawing gray and i'm like oh i actually like that better well Hopefully, you realize it's okay to screw up. Because if it's not okay for you to screw up, then that means it's not okay for me to screw up. And then if it's not okay for me to screw up, I'm in a lot of trouble. Because I screw up all the time. I usually make at least one screw up per picture I do. And the worst part is I don't notice the screw up until later. So I'll be, I'll be working like on this picture, I'll, I'll be working on it. And I'm like, you know, actually this doesn't look that bad. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, this is pretty cool. Like, Hey, I'm so proud of this. Like the internet's going to love this picture I just drew. And then I go to like make a short of it later or I go to post it, um, you know, to Instagram or, or something like that. And as soon as as soon as I stop, um, you know, making the video or whatever, and I hop onto those other platforms or as soon as I take a picture of it, really, I start looking at it. And I'm like, oh, man, I screwed that part up and that part. And. Um, yeah, like it doesn't take very long and to to start realizing hey i'm not very happy with this picture i just did and and the worst part is that like why can't i notice these things while i'm drawing it and fix it that's my frustration if you can notice it while you're drawing it and fix it then you know you wouldn't make as many mistakes that's my frustration i want to catch these things as i'm making them and fix them then let's switch let's off the Charcoal, just so I don't have to press so hard to get darker areas. So I want to make less mistakes, obviously, but also I want to catch the ones that I do and not let them like go, go too long. Worst part is I know some things after they're already posted. Like if I can catch them before they're posted, then maybe I just won't post them. But, um, a lot of times I draw human beings and uh, like maybe the eyes are in the wrong position or 
or like one eye is lower than the other, or wabi sabi. <laughs> what are you talking about, Huey? Is that based on something I said? I don't know. Just a random wabi sabi. Anyway, I'll I'll um I'll post something up and then only later will I realize that something's weird about it. And that that's really frustrating because at that point, you know, people have already seen it. You know? Like I don't have a lot of viewers or I don't have a, like a lot of subscribers or a lot of viewers, but you know, sometimes people will look at my stuff and you know, even if it's a handful of people and I made a mistake. I mean, I don't beat myself up over it, but man, I, that it would be nice if I could avoid that. And then sometimes I make a mistake and I try to fix it and it turns out worse. That's frustrating too. Not good at cantering, huh? Thanks, Huli. I think it's just something that creative people suffer from. I'm not unique. Oh yeah, you said cantering, and I'm like, is that an art term? Because like, it, it, I, I sometimes draw horses, and um, there is a cantering in horses. I'm like, are they talking about horses, or are they talking about some art uh, term? Centering, yeah. I kind of screw up on layouts sometimes too. Oh, so it's not just like, it's not just something you add to sushi to cleanse your palate or wasabi. It's wabi-sabi, not wasabi. I get you. That makes sense. Thanks, Huli. You're the best. Uh, but, you know, like, spoiler alert, every creative person suffers this kind of stuff. Um, in fact, I, I really think that the mark of a good artist isn't that they don't make mistakes. I mean, obviously, like, somebody with um, a lot more experience would make less mistakes. That's just, you know, how it works. But I, I also think that um, one of the marks of a uh, a great artist, which, you know, I wouldn't count myself as that, but yet I'm working on it. But... Uh, the mark of a great artist is somebody who um, who can produce work even though it's not perfect. You know, who can who can get past that like you know that mental thing where you're like, oh, I don't even want to do something because it's gonna suck. Um, I I feel like I'm in a good place where I can create something even knowing that it might not turn out right, and. Uh, even if I'm not there, I can get back to there sometimes, you know, like, like I might, I might be like, oh, I don't even want to, I don't even want to post something because it's terrible or whatever. But I do, um, I do feel like that's short lived in my mind. Like, um, I might feel that way for a little while, but I quickly get over it. I think. I kind of want some sushi now. <laughs> All this talk of wabi sabi makes me think wasabi which makes me think i want some sushi you, you're not supposed to have sushi on cinco de mayo happy cinco de mayo by the way i should have mentioned that at the outset i hope you all had some tacos and some uh margaritas all right Well, I feel like I made some progress on this face here to where I feel like it's um, 
not half done like it was before. So that's good. Like I was worried that I was going to finish the stream and not have a thumbnail to attach to the video, <laughs> which I've done before. You know, I've, I've gotten to the end of the stream and I don't have anything good enough to, uh, to set as the, uh, thumbnail, which is always a little embarrassing, but it is what it is. Perfectionism is overrated and I would argue impossible to achieve. Um, I went like I think I mentioned this earlier in the week. I went um I went to the Cincinnati Art Museum last weekend and uh I was looking around at some of the uh the portraits that are in there and, and mind you it's a it's a museum. The Cincinnati Art Museum is a really good museum, uh, actually, for uh art and um you know, they have a pretty good collection. Some of them are from masters and stuff. Um, and uh, I'm looking around and I'm like, yeah, I'm not the only one that makes mistakes because there are some mistakes in their work. Like, I, I guess that's their style or whatever, but like we were talking about um, that dog drawing I did where the eyes are too big. Guess what? There was a portrait hanging in the Cincinnati Art Museum, which is a decent art museum. And the eyes are too big on that one too. Everybody screws up. And guess what? Sometimes you screw up and you still end up in the museum. So there you go. I don't even have any ambition to get into a museum. Like, honestly, if I can draw good enough to put some stuff up at Comic-Con sometime, I feel like that's achieving my goals. <laughs> that's pretty sad goals, isn't it? It's like, I just want to be good enough for Comic-Con. I want to be the type of artist that can that can like present their stuff at a comic con. Yeah. Sushi seeking zombies. All right, I think we're nearing nearing the end of this. I'll give it another five minutes just to round it off to the uh, two hours. Um, so I think I could probably spend some more time filling out the body. Um, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that at some point, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the face, I, I think. Like, there's some more that I could probably get in here. Like, I still feel like it's a little light for a... Um, for a uh, collie, like a collie's got more depth up here, I guess. And we're gonna continue working on it, but like I feel like this area up here could be darker with like another layer of charcoal. I feel like these areas could probably be filled in some, but for the most part, I'm not unhappy with this picture. It turned out pretty good. He says, and then like two hours later, he'll notice all these mistakes in it after it's been posted. <laughs> Looks great. Let's post it. No. Ah, <laughs> oh, you should you should wait until the morning before you posted it, and then you would notice all those mistakes. I'm just kidding. Like this this one's just for fun anyway. Doesn't matter if there's mistakes in it. I like your philosophy, Huli. As you get older, you realize perfectionism is overrated. I I think um I think behind that is the um something that only comes with age, I think, or like just a general sense of like maturity is uh realizing that, you know, 
the concept of perfectionism, like, you do go through the world thinking that maybe you're not perfect, but perfect's out there somewhere. It, like, maybe your heroes are perfect, or, you know, that girl you like, or that guy you like is perfect, and, you know, it, it only takes experience to realize that, no, no, nobody's perfect. You know, maybe you think your parents are perfect or, you know, your, uh, your mentor is perfect or any of that stuff. You know, that's why they say don't meet your heroes because they're going to disappoint. So, yeah, I completely agree with you, Huli. That's, uh. That's wisdom. You're laying wisdom on us on a Friday night. And honestly, that's probably a good place to end it. On a nice little word of wisdom. Only dogs are perfect. That's the perfect place to end it. Great save there, uh, Just Dave. Dogs are perfect. Cats think they are. Cats think they're perfect, but dogs are perfect. You guys are such smart people. I'm glad you guys hang out here. Anyway, every time I say I think I'm done, I keep tinkering with it. All right, so I, I, I do think I'm going to call it a night on this. Uh, perfect is the imperfect person, and of course, dogs are always perfect. That's true. Dogs are the best. Okay, so, um, yeah, we've got a uh, collie here, a partially finished collie, at least uh, in the face. We've got enough there, I think, to call this a good first run at it. Um, again, I might actually tinker with this at a later date just to kind of finish it up, maybe put in the rest of the body. Um, but I don't know. It was just practicing. I, I've never uh, done a collie before, so I, I think uh, it was a good exercise. Um you know, some tonal values I think is missing. Like, really, this is white, this is orange. They should not be the same tonal values. So that's something I would work on if I was trying to, um, you know, do this for real. Um, but no, I think it's pretty good. So um, let me go back. Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, say thank you guys for hanging out with me. I know that you have a lot of options and things you could be doing on a Friday night. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, it seems like there's a lot going on this weekend. We've got a, a new king being uh, coronated, if you're into that kind of thing. If you're not into that kind of thing, in my own neck of the woods, we have a uh, the Kentucky Derby. And if you're not into that, then go see Guardians of the Galaxy because I love those guys. They're, they're so funny. Uh, one of the best properties that MCU has. And if you're not into that, well, I hope you go out and get some sunshine because, uh, well, if it's raining where you're living... I hope you uh, go out and enjoy the rain. <laughs> Either way, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And um, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. So have a great weekend. I'll see you. Bye.